Hello, this is Sean Roberts. I'm Chief Technologist for Lincoln Network, and I have with me Daniel Takish, a Regulatory Policy Fellow at the Niskanen Center and uh, manager of the Captured Economy Project, uh, focused on rent sinking and regressive, uh, uh, and regressive, regressive regulations on intellectual property. Uh, once I get going, I'm mispronouncing, I can't stop. Um, so uh, Daniel, we were just talking about um, different uh, CFAA, uh, um, the Computer Fraud and Abuse Act, uh, and, but basically copyright um, in general and how it's been uh, applied in, in some of the past, um, specifically the case of um, Aaron Schwartz. Um, it's probably, it's a little bit in the past, maybe somebody had forgotten, but his case and the application of this law um, and uh, possibly even um, the abuse of it, uh, which is certainly debatable, but um, uh, certainly some people feel that way in his case, um, and how it how it's impacted innovation and kind of um, we could talk a little bit expanding it to today. But I, what I wanted to do is just kind of bring up his case as uh, as a possibly uh, a great example of how a law can be misapplied. Um, certainly, maybe even used for publicity um, uh, purposes. Um, so I'll stop talking. Uh, <laughs> Tell me what you think about the, the Aaron Schwartzman case. Yeah. Um, so first, I think obviously uh, Aaron Schwartz's case, it's it's tragic. Uh, he was uh, such a, a crucial figure in the development of a free and open internet. Um, and uh, I, I think it's, I'm not a criminal justice policy expert, so I can't really opine on the actions of the Justice Department or the MIT police um, or anything like that. Though I would say that um, you know, if a law could uh, produce such tragic consequences where he was potentially uh, liable uh, or he potentially could have been sent to prison for 35 years in the negotiations, we see that it was reduced significantly. But even then, someone facing such a severe penalty uh, for um, uh, engaging in the actions he did, which Jace, which a representative from JSTOR described as um, inconsiderate, uh, right. but it certainly wasn't their opinion that it was uh, deserving of criminal penalties, whether or not the law actually says it does. Uh, I think that's something worth considering. If a law can produce such tragic consequences, no matter the intentions, um, I think that should give everyone pause and we should really um, think about uh, what happens there. But speaking a little bit more broadly, I think there are two uh, um, uh, uh, more serious implications for competition, internet, uh, and com technology policy that we can view from the case. Um, is that first, it has a, a pretty severe chilling effect on innovation and on interoperability and on the private law that is, you know, the 18,000 page document uh, that comes every time you update your iTunes subscription. Um, right, you know, getting uh, longer every day. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah exa exactly, it would be impossible uh, to read through the, the, the terms of service. And the bigger concern with the Computer Fraud and Abuse Act, which was designed initially to prevent like proper hacking, either breaking into a system and stealing credit card data. I mean, the original justification for the Computer Fraud and Abuse Act was a bunch of congressmen in the 80s uh, saw war games where Ferris Bueller, uh, or at least the actor that played uh, Matthew Broderick, uh, almost started a nuclear war. And Congress people said, we don't have criminal penalties, um, you know, after watching that movie, which maybe not the greatest start uh, to uh, a, a serious portion of the criminal code. Um, but this law that was designed to prevent proper hacking has language uh, that says access to computer without authorization, which is relatively unobjectionable, um, or exceeded authorized access. And it's that provision of the law uh, that is very vague that Representative Zoe Lofgren and Senator Ron Wyden have tried to clarify, because what is exceeding authorized access? Um, one law professor put it this way, say you have a company computer and your company says you're not allowed to conduct um, like personal financial business. Uh, but then somebody says like, oh shoot, I forgot to pay my credit card bill this month uh, and they're at work. And so they quick log on to Chase or whatever your credit card is and they pay their credit card bill in violation of company policy. Um, 
they exceeded authorized access. And while mm -hmm. I don't think that necessarily uh, they would go to prison or face civil, civil or criminal liability or whether folks would care, um, under a plain reading of the law, um, it's entirely possible uh, that they could be liable under the Computer Fraud and Abuse Act. So that's the, the, the first uh, the first one is that it's this incredibly vague law um, that could be used to nail anybody who's engaged in uh, behavior that folks simply don't like um, on their computer network and things like that. So it's it's um, it, it, it's a provision of law that could harm people for extremely uh, potentially innocuous um, behavior. And in the most recent case that we see before the Supreme Court that had oral arguments a couple of days ago, we see someone engaged in um, less innocuous behavior. You have uh, Van Buren, who was a police officer uh, who was engaged in some um, shady dealing, shall we say, uh, on a computer that he had access to most certainly, um, but uh, he used in an unauthorized manner in which uh, you know, it became a federal matter because he was uh, convicted under the Computer Fraud and Abuse uh, Fraud and Abuse Act. So it's a law that goes well beyond, I think, the behavior, the rather extreme and undesirable behavior um, that it was designed to prevent. So the idea that it could be used as a tool, something in the back pocket to go after people engaged in uh, politically unpopular or otherwise unsavory behavior, rather than actually addressing um, the substance of what they do, uh, either by going by pursuing them with laws that are already on the book, but perhaps harder to prosecute uh, or crafting new laws to deal with inappropriate behavior. Uh, and fortunate and fingers crossed that I think the Supreme Court uh, will rule in favor of a more narrow interpretation of what uh, exceeding authorized access means. This could potentially be a case where bad facts, the extreme uh, uh, um, details of the Van Buren case could lead to bad law, um, but I'm relatively optimistic uh, that the court will get it right on that front. So that's the bigger one, how you've got uh, this law that could be used as a hammer, um, uh, it, you know, in scenarios where it doesn't merit a nail. But the second, and I think bigger issue for technology policy, innovation policy, competition policy, is the, uh, <clears throat> is the fact that, you know, we went after uh, you know, someone who is downloading articles off of um, J, uh, excuse me, off of J Store right. uh, for violating terms of service, and the terms of service, you know, is that exceeding author, you know, is that exceeding authorized access, violating a terms of service? Um, potentially, yes. And so we have a scenario where you could have a private contract that very few people read through. Um, uh, that could be used to seriously hamper competitive effects. And it's not just some simple user violating a terms of service, but rather it's a company that perhaps want to create a different interface, a different front end for uh, you know, Facebook or, or Gmail or YouTube or whatever. Um, you know, if the one of these companies puts in their terms of service, you're not allowed to use uh, a different interface. You're not allowed to use some separate front end uh, excuse me, and then a company wants to develop that, well, they could potentially be liable or their users could be liable under the Computer Fraud and Abuse Act. And I think that creates uh, a very harsh barrier backed by the, the, you know, the federal criminal justice system. And that's, I think, a serious suppression of competition. So if we want to look at um, uh, you know, how we can potentially increase competition in the online platform space. We need to look at the way in which terms of service function as private law and how just putting, uh, you know, certain provisions in the terms of service could uh, strangle any uh, competition before it even has the slightest chance of getting off the ground. You have a wonderful day. This has been Lincoln Shorts.